Good morning and Happy New Year. Welcome back to New Milton Evangelical Free Church's online service. We are looking this week at our text for the year. So um, what is our text for the year? Well, it's from Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 2. Lord, be gracious to us. We long for you. Be our strength every morning, our salvation in time of distress. Now we're going to consider that later through the sermon. But before we begin the service, let's uh, pray and commit our time to the Lord. Loving Father, as we come to you this morning, we want to thank you and praise you that you are a God who has kept us, kept us through 2020. Uh, Lord, in the midst of all of the troubles that uh, uh, have uh, well worried many countries around the world, and we thank you for that. Lord, we pray that as we come into 2021 and we seek to bring glory and honour and praise to your name, that you would be pleased to meet with us as we worship you. Lord, we ask that you'd help us in our homes uh, amongst our families, we're Lord, to lift just lift our name, uh, lift your name on high, and to praise you uh, with all of our being. We pray, Lord, that you would work powerfully in each in each one of us this morning as we uh, hear the songs sung, as we uh, hear uh, your word read and the message given. We pray, Lord, that you would work for the glory and praise of your name, and we commit all of this uh, to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So it can sometimes be a bit hard to see where God is at work, but uh, as we sing our next song, what we do is we recognise that God is working his purposes out as year succeeds to year.
come next to our children's talk. Uh, normally, uh, that would have been conducted by Georgia and Seth, but uh, this year we're going to start off a new section, and it's called the Thomas Talks. Uh, so it's over to them. Hi guys, I know you're used to seeing Seth and Georgia for the children's talk, but for the next few weeks it's going to be us doing it. And we're going to be looking at parables over the next few weeks, and today's one is called The Pearl of Great Price. Now we're going to be showing you a little sketch all about that parable. Wow, that is a really beautiful pearl, but I bet it's really expensive, but I do really want it. How much is it? This pearl is £10,000. It's our most prized possession in this whole shop. Wow, that is really expensive, but I do really want it. I guess I'm going to have to sell everything I own. <sighs> I hope it's enough. Hi. Hi. Would you like to buy anything? Yes, please. That will be 20 pounds, please. Thank you. Those were some of my favourite things. I'm really going to miss them. I must be nearly there by now. Only a few more things left. Can I buy some stuff? Yeah, take whatever you want. Oh, I really like that. But the pearl looks even better. I can do this. Is this a Martha Thomas painting? It is. That would be £200, please. Thank you. <sighs> Finally, I've sold everything I own. I really hope that it's enough for the pearl. Hi. Hi. Is this enough money for that beautiful pearl? Um, yeah, it is. It all adds up. Thank goodness. I just sell everything I own to get that much money. Well, take care of it. It's the only one that's kind. Thank you. I finally got it. What was your favourite present this Christmas? And however much you loved that present, would you give all of your other presents just for that one gift? Well, the man in our story certainly did. He wanted nothing more than that pearl and would give everything for it. Natural pearls of any size are extremely rare. One of the biggest pearls in the world is the bright orange sunrise pearl. The sunrise pearl is almost as large as a ping pong ball. Few oysters or snails live long enough to make such a large pearl. Because it was so rare and so big and so beautiful, one man offered to pay $7 million for the sunrise pearl, but the owner refused to sell it. Jesus compares heaven to a pearl, but the problem is we can't buy ourselves into heaven. Even all the money in the world wouldn't be able to buy ourselves into heaven. But there is one person who paid the price to get us to heaven. Jesus paid the price of his own life by taking our sins on the cross and dying for us. Now Jesus offers heaven and eternal life to anyone believes in him. That makes Jesus the pearl of great price and we should be willing to follow him. So why would anyone sell everything they own just for one pearl? The only reason someone would sell everything they own for one pearl is because they wanted that pearl more than anything in the world. So how is Jesus like the pearl in our story today? Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is like a pearl. Jesus meant that he is the way to heaven. He himself is the pearl of great value. Following Jesus is worth giving up everything. You can't buy your way into heaven but you can give up anything you love more than Jesus to follow him. Today's memory verse is from Matthew chapter 13 and it's verses 45 and 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I pray that you'd help us to not have any idols above you and that you would help us to draw closer to you each day and love you more. Amen. Amen. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye. 
So thank you then, Thomases, for uh, leading us through that section. Uh, now we're going to sing. We're going to sing and we're going to remind ourselves that God is the one who keeps us safe as we sing together. Uh, he will hold me fast. <laughs> to us now by Wendy and uh, we're going to be led in prayer by Ben and Claire. This morning's reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 33 verses 1 to 6. Distress and help. Woe to you destroyer, you who have not been destroyed. Woe to you betrayer, you who have not been betrayed. When you stop destroying you will be destroyed. When you stop betraying, you will be betrayed. Lord, be gracious to us. We long for you. Be our strength every morning, our salvation in time of distress. At the uproar of your army, the peoples flee. When you rise up, the nations scatter. Your plunder, O nations, is harvested as by young locusts. Like a swarm of locusts, people pounce on it. The Lord is exalted, for he dwells on high. He will fill Zion with his justice and righteousness. He will be the sure foundation for your times. A rich store of salvation and wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the key to this treasure. Good morning. 
Good morning. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for your amazing power and work in our lives. Thank you for your goodness and blessings over us. Thank you that you are able to bring hope through even the toughest of times, strengthening us for your purposes. Thank you for your great love and care. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you that you are always with us and will never leave us. Thank you that you are our shepherd and we lack nothing. And although there are lots of reasons to feel afraid and vulnerable right now, we are sheep with a good shepherd. You know us and love us and are committed to caring for us. Thank you for the good things you've given us, the green pastures and still waters which show your kindness towards us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being the good shepherd who laid down his life to provide all that is needed for the salvation of his sheep. Thank you for your incredible sacrifice so that we might have freedom and life. Forgive us when we don't thank you enough for who you are, for all that you do, and for all that you've given. You tell us in your word not to worry about tomorrow, as each day has enough trouble of its own. Help us, therefore, to take things one day at a time, knowing that whatever we face when we wake up tomorrow and on every day that follows, your goodness and love are assured and your grace is sufficient. Help us to set our eyes and our hearts on you afresh. Renew our spirits, fill us with your peace and joy. We love you, we need you this day and every day. We give you praise and thanks, for you alone are worthy. Amen. Amen. Father God, we pray for our world. It's a world that's hurting and in fear of COVID. Father God, we pray in particular for the United States. We pray for the new president. We pray for your peace and your healing in that land. And Father God, we pray for leaders across the world as they're faced with so many difficult decisions and challenges. We pray, Father God, that they would uh, be humble, that they would show humility, that they would seek your wisdom. Father God, they would ask for your help so that they might become good shepherds to their sheep, to their people, their nations. And Father God, we pray for the economies of the world. At the moment in crisis, we think of those many who've lost jobs and are worried about losing them. And Father God, that, that your hope that shines eternal would give them strength at this time. We pray too for the medical world. We think of the vaccinations and thank you, Father God, for, for this. We, we pray for the delivery of vaccinations. We pray for all who work on the front line. We think of not just of nurses and doctors in the NHS, but we think of the emergency services, shop workers, and all who put themselves at risk for the sake of others. Father God, we pray that you would protect them. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are struggling at this time with their own battles. Father God, they could be physical, mental. Father God, we pray that you will be with them that you would help them and assure them of your love. We pray for, for teachers and students now studying at home. We pray, Father God, that you would grant them patience and perseverance there. And Father God, as we think of perseverance, we pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters across this land, across the world. Father God, just to own the name of Jesus brings danger to them. Yet they continue because they love you and they put their faith and trust in you. We pray for them. And Heavenly Father, we pray for our ministry here at the church. We pray our thanks to, to our pastor and to those who, who help feed us, your sheep. Father God, online and in different ways. And help each one of us to respond, Father God, to your words of truth that gives us new life in, in believing in you. Father God, we thank you that as we come to, to hear more from your word this morning at the service, we pray that you would bless the speaker. Father God, that your words would be um, alive to us, that we would hear them, that we would respond, and we would thank you for them. As we offer our prayers to you, in the name of our Saviour, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
So let's join together and sing. Uh, my song is Love Unknown. your Bibles open then at uh, Isaiah chapter 33, the passage that was read to us um, by Wendy earlier. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, really just the second verse. Um, it's a wonderful verse, I'll quote it again in a moment, but uh, we're going to do so under the title of The One on Whom We Can Depend. So Isaiah 33 and verse 2 says, Lord, be gracious to us, we long for you. Be our strength every morning, our salvation in time of distress. We uh, often have a, a, an annual text that carries us through the year, and so this year I'm suggesting that we have uh, Isaiah 33 and verse 2. Lord, be gracious to us, uh, we long for you. Be our strength every morning, our salvation in time of of distress. People, as we come to look at this passage, the people of God are under judgment. The Assyrian nation um, has come or is coming to take the land. The judgment is a result of the people. Uh, the people had turned away from God. They had turned their back on him. Uh, they were going through the motions of worship. They were turning up and doing all of the rituals that they were meant to do, but uh, their hearts weren't in it. They were not 
in, in tune with God. They weren't interested in God at all. Their hearts were far from him. And so the judgment that God brings upon his people is a just judgment. It is a judgment uh, which is to help them to understand that they are um, going wrong, help them to understand that they need to turn back to him. And the Lord is righteous in his actions, and that's always wise to remember that. But it's interesting to note that though God was using the Assyrians uh, to deal with his people, to judge them in effect, he was not justifying the ungodly nature of those that he was using. And so we have here in verse 1 of chapter 33 the understanding that uh, judgment will come upon uh, though, uh, the ones that will persecute his people. Judgment will come upon them as well. They will not be overlooked. Um, God deals with sin uh, and he does not overlook it in that way. Well, Isaiah and the people know that the nation that they are representative of, um, they know that they're guilty. They know that they have done wrong uh, and they do not ask God for justice. It's interesting. Um, we often uh, you know, cry out if we feel that we've been hard done by and we cry out for justice. Well, they're not crying out for justice here in this passage. They are crying out for grace. They're crying out that God would come um, and that he would show them uh, compassion, as it were, in the midst of their difficulties, to show them uh, that he is still God in the midst of their struggles. Now, they want God to overlook their sin. Uh, and I've just said God doesn't overlook sin. So they're asking that God would, um, God's wrath would be turned aside, that it would be somehow dealt with in order that they might not have to face it. Uh, if the judgment comes, they recognise that no one can stand. And, uh, and we recognise that as ourselves, don't we, as New Testament Christians, as those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We recognise that if our sin is counted against us, then there is no one who can stand. There is no one on this earth that is righteous, none that uh, God would be able to uh, overlook the sins of. Well, they want God to, to come and to act in such a way as that they aren't found guilty. Well, when we wake up to the fact that we need God, uh, it can come as rather a shock, can't it? And it came as a shock to the people of God. They had dismissed him. They didn't really want much to do with him. Um, and it comes as a shock to them that they would need God. And, uh, and here we have them crying out for that help. And, and, you know, sometimes when we're going along merrily in our lives uh, and doing what we want to do, uh, and then we recognise that we, dis we need God, we recognise that we need him at work in our life. Uh, suddenly our circumstances might change and bring about that understanding of our need of him. We certainly maybe have felt something of that back in 2020 uh, when we discovered the pandemic, we discovered that there was this problem. It caused us to do a little bit of heart uh, searching, a bit of reflection on where we're at in our lives. Uh, and when circumstances change and we feel helpless and we feel afraid, that's when we know that we need to cry out to God and that's when we know that we need to make uh, our appeal to God. Now waking up to your need means that you are ready to call out to God. It means that you're ready to, to, to drop everything and to say, look, Lord, help us in the midst of our problems. Help us in the midst of our difficulties. It means that you're willing to listen to what God has to say. It means that you're prepared to respond to God's grace and to uh, accept any offer of help that he might give us. We're ready to think things through. We're ready to take it seriously. And actually here the people cry out and they cry out, Lord, be gracious to us. Uh, Lord, be gracious to us. Uh, well, as we begin 2021, this should be our prayer, shouldn't it? We need for this year not more willpower. You know, often New Year's resolution, resolutions that we make, uh, we, we, we ask for more willpower that we might be able to stick to a diet or to do more exercise or all of those kind of things. We don't need those. Uh, we do not need more rules and regulations. We're a bit tired and fed up with rules and regulations as we come into 2021. Uh, we want them all to be gone. And uh, sometimes even as individuals, we make rules and regulations for the coming year that we might be able to keep them. But uh, we don't need any of those. Uh, we do not need any more man-made ideas. What we need, what we desperately need as we come into 2021 is that God would be gracious to us. That God would pour out that grace upon us and in order that we might experience that grace in order that we might know God's grace at work in our lives there must be a longing for God coming from within us there must be a desire in our hearts to know more of God so in 2021 that's what we need isn't it a desire to know God better a desire to have God at work in our lives 
the grace that we need, the grace that we indeed have received before and that enables us and moves us in all of our days of difficulty stems from the revelation of God. It stems from God making himself known. It is God himself who deals with our needs. That's what uh, many of the passages in scripture are there to remind us that God is the one who deals with our needs. And if there is no desire for relationship with this God, if there's no desire for relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, then we have no reason to expect his help. That's the first thing that becomes clear as we look at this text. We need that relationship with God. We need that longing for him. And if you don't have that in your life at the moment, then you need to start with that as your prayer. Lord, help me to desire you. Help me to long for you that I might understand why I need you and uh, that I might have you as part of my life. And it is the mistake, isn't it, that the world makes or the people of the world make. Uh, they want nothing to do with God, uh, have no interest in the things of God, uh, but are very quick to blame him or to decry his apparent uh, disinterest uh, when there becomes problems in, in life. Uh, it's funny, isn't it, that uh, nobody would want God and yet he is the one who is at fault if there's a problem. Well, the issue really is that we don't want him, isn't it? It's not that he is not there, it's not that he doesn't want to uh, be a part of our lives, but it's more often than not that we do not want him and we want many other things instead. Seek the Lord this year. Uh, make him your longing. Uh, long for him. Uh, Isaiah, in a few chapters later, Isaiah 55 and verse 6 says this, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. It needs to be a priority in 2021 that we seek the Lord, that we uh, cry out to him, that he might be gracious to us. We need to acknowledge our need and cry out for that grace. We, we certainly know what need is now. We've been uh, desperate to get rid of this, uh, this virus that has been amongst us for so long. Uh, and it's becoming worse, or it would seem that it's becoming worse in different parts of the country. And it's making us anxious and so we should be those that desperately cry out to God for his grace. We need to acknowledge our need and cry out that the favour of God that we do not deserve might be poured out upon us. Well the people of Isaiah's day had to look back didn't they? They had to look way back actually into their history to see the way that God had dealt graciously with them in the past. They had to look right back to the rescue of God's people from, e from Egypt when they were in bondage, when they were uh, trapped and couldn't get out and there was a desperate need to be rescued. And so they had to look back and see how they cried out in the days of Moses that God would rescue them. And God raised up Moses for that really very task to rescue them. Or they'd have to look back to uh, the... Uh, victories of Joshua as he comes into the promised land, as he is taking on land uh, that God has promised to his people. And he does so, and he only does so, because of the grace of God poured out into that situation. As they've been brought to this place that God has declared that will be theirs. There's still sin in the camp, there's still problems, and, and Achan's sin becomes a major issue as you read the early chapters of Joshua. And it is God's grace that brings them into this land, and so they can look back and see that it's God's grace that brings them their victories. And also they can look to the reign of David. Uh, there were problems in the land before David comes along. Saul who, who goes away from God and then uh, after David there are problems yet again. But while David is there as king, uh, in the main he follows God and God is the one who brings them victories. He is the one who extends the borders of the land right to where they should be. He is the gracious God who responds to his people's cry for grace. Uh, are you crying out for grace today? Now we get to look back, don't we? Unlike those of the Old Testament, we get to look back and see the most gracious act ever. We get to see the Lord Jesus Christ. We see God who should be judging sinners, who should be judging sinners for their sin because of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, because of his going to uh, the cross to die on our behalf. Then we see the gracious love of God to deal with our sin in order that we might be forgiven, in order that we might have hope for our future, in order that we might escape eternal judgment and instead have eternal joy in the presence of God. God himself lays down his life for us to save us, uh, not because we deserve saving, but rather because God loves us. For God so loved uh, the world that he sent his only son 
that we might believe in him and that we might not perish um, is a very rough paraphrase of that verse. Uh, we need to understand that God is the one who is gracious and we cry out to him for that grace, not because we deserve it, but because we need it. We need that grace in our day and so we cry out to him. But not only do we need God to be gracious to us, but we also need that he would be our strength every morning. Now we're all feeling fed up with this pandemic, aren't we? We're all fed up with the restrictions, we're fed up with all the fear that is generated, we're fed up with the chopping and changing of advice, uh, we're fed up with dishonesty and, and the feeling of powerlessness. Our strength is gone and that can lead us to act in ways that are not helpful either to ourselves or to others around us. We can feel as though we are unable to move forward. Well, we do not need to feel like that in 2021. Whatever the situation, even if the pandemic gets worse, we do not need to feel like that because we can trust the God who can give us his strength every day. 2021, therefore, needs to be the year that we make sure that the Lord is our strength, that he is the one that we come to. We need to make sure of this every morning. We need to come and grasp a hold of that strength which is on offer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now 2020 tested our lives and helped us to reflect on what is important, uh, what is important to us. It showed us that we need one another. Uh, that we do not do well when we are in isolation. It showed us just how important meeting together as God's people is um, when we had to do without it. We have realised just how difficult it is to walk with God uh, when we do not have brothers and sisters encouraging us along the way. And it often does, doesn't it, take the absence of something to help us to understand its value. You often talk about uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Well, that is only true if you valued that which you had in the first place, if you realised that it was something of worth. Uh, when it is taken from you, that, that, wor that uh, worth, as it were, is shown to you in more clear ways. Uh, we need to be those that recognise that we need to come to God each day to seek his strength. David understood it, didn't he? he uh, various of the Psalms, he tells us that. Psalm 5 and verse 3, In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. 2021 needs to be a year in which you come to God in the morning uh, and uh, uh, really lay out all of the issues of the day that you may face uh, really seek God's face and seek his strength. Uh, David obviously went a little bit further than just the morning. Psalm 55 and verse 17, evening, morning and noon I cry out in distress and he hears my voice. Here is the confidence of the psalmist. When I needed God, all I had to do was cry out for him and he is there. He hears my prayers. He hears me in these days. And he recognises Psalm 90 and verse 14 that, uh, that God satisfies us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all day. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. We need to be those that seek God every day. When we commit our, our ways to the Lord, then we can expect him to make our path straight. That's what he's promised, isn't it? Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Um, and when we do not do that, then we can expect that our days will go wrong and that there will be hardship and difficulty and we will get hurt. Now, please don't get misunderstand me. Whenever we cry out to God, God doesn't magically take away all of our problems, but he does give us his strength in the midst of the problems. He is the one who enables us to stand. And if we aren't crying out to him and asking for him for that, then we have every reason to realise that we will fall flat on our face. Now we all hope for a better year, don't we, than last year. Uh, yet there are no guarantees. Even the vaccine that is being pushed out, and we pray that it is effective, but even that is not a guarantee that we will have a better year. There is only the strength that comes through Christ that will enable us to live for God in these days, in the days that God has granted us, whatever those days might look like. So we need to be seeking him for his strength each and every day. And we need to be as well aware that sufficient for the day is its troubles. 
We have a, a tendency to try and answer the problems of tomorrow before we've even got there. We don't deal with the ones that we have right in front of us. We don't deal with the life that we're living right now. We are trying to get ahead, as it were. Now, we don't know when we are going to get back to normal, whatever normal looks like. Um, but what we do know is that today, God is all the strength that I need to live for him. Now, I have a set of Bluetooth earphones that's not me boasting that's just me telling you and it's really annoying when I come to use them and they are flat now I only have myself to blame for that uh, for not putting them on charge you see the power is there at all time the power is there uh, throughout the day it doesn't normally go off not here in the UK um, and the power is there but I just didn't make use of it well, our strength relies upon us plugging into Christ every day, coming to him, to seek him, to find him to be our strength. And when we don't, we only have ourselves to blame that our strength is not sufficient, that we find ourselves in the midst of fear, or that we find ourselves making decisions based upon fear instead of upon trust in the living God. We need to make be those that make our morning time with Christ each day a non-negotiable priority. Uh, often when you talk to Christians, they come up with this excuse, oh, my day is so busy, I just can't do it in the morning, I like to do it later in the day. And I'm not, ask, not telling you to have a uh, religious pattern necessarily, although the, the Bible is clear that the morning is the time that we should seek the Lord. It is the time which we should be seeking his face and asking his help on the day. It's no good getting partway through the day and then suddenly uh, retrospectively asking him for help with the problems that you are facing. Uh, you need to be there in the morning seeking him and asking him for his strength. Maybe 2021 will be the day that you make sure that that's the priority of your life. Our salvation in a time of distress is what the verse helps us to focus our minds on in the end. We live in a time when trusting God is just not fashionable. It's not the key. It's not the thing to be done. Uh, we scratch our heads, don't we, about Americans as they make a, a big deal about Christianity within their, uh, within their system, within their political system. Um, largely because there are evangelical Christians that uh, seem to be able to sway votes a, a lot in that land and, and we just don't understand that concept in this country. If you're a Christian in this country, well, that's uh, something to be hidden if you go into politics. Um, we've discovered that in, in the way that some of our politicians in the past have been treated. Well, here we are in this country living in such a way as that it is not fashionable to be a Christian. Our own Prime Minister, when he addresses the nation, he tells us how we must put our faith in science and he exhorts us to look to science as our salvation. Well, this, of course, is a vain hope, isn't it? You only have to listen to the conflicting views of scientists. There are articles. Um, to be read uh, left, right and centre that talk about all uh, of the things that we face and uh, each of the scientists comes up with a different conclusion. Um, and scientists around the world uh, and even in our own country disagree. They're floundering around in the dark. They're trying to understand things that they don't understand. Uh, in God's grace, they may come to understand those things. But at the moment, it's a bit of a, a mess. Now, don't get me wrong. We pray that these vaccines that have been rolled out will indeed enable us to get back to some semblance of normality in the life to come, in the months to come. We pray that. But to put our faith in science as though it had all of life's answers is a foolish thing. It barely has the answers that we're looking for in this pandemic. To think about it in terms of our life as though science will answer everything that we face is a strange thing. Science is a tool which men use and when they use it well they are thinking God's thoughts after him. That's really the understanding of what science is. Uh, God has set all of these rules into place that govern our universe and when we discover them it is an amazing thing but all we are doing is discovering what God already knew because he put it in place in the first place. We need rather to put our faith in the God who moves men to discover amazing things, who grants them the accidents or the unintended consequences that so often lead to the breakthroughs that we need. It's funny, isn't it, how scientists, they often get themselves down a rabbit hole thinking about something and then something goes wrong in their experiment that leads them to discover the very thing that they were looking for, but they were looking in the wrong place. 
Uh, God in his grace brings about those so-called accidents uh, on uh, many an occasion. It's sad, isn't it, that our government hasn't called us to a national day of prayer. But actually, far sadder still, if we who know the salvation that comes through Christ, who have trusted him for the forgiveness of a sin, if we have not ourselves been calling upon God for his salvation in these days... It should be a priority in our prayers, shouldn't it? That God would act in this day and show that it is him who is doing the saving. As God's people, it should be our priority to cry out to God that he would save in this day, that he would be the one who rescues us from the distress that we face today. We have the example of the Lord Jesus Christ on earth. He showed us countless times that uh, when what God wants is relationship, what he wants is that we would have relationship with him. A relationship requires communication and, and God knew that and the Lord Jesus displays that to us. And when Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, though he did not need to pray, and he actually says that, uh, because he has the power to save, he prayed anyway to teach us that prayer is a, excuse me, a recognition of the awesome power of God to save. Prayer is no magical mantra uh, that uh, we say to get God to do um, uh, to perform a miracle as though he's some uh, magic monkey as it were. Prayer is laying all of your trust on God knowing that he will do what is right. You know, Abraham, when he interceded for Lot and his family, he understood that. He, Abraham says, as even before he begins the intercession, he says, uh, will not the judge of all the earth do right? Well, of course he will, uh, because he is the only righteous God that there is. And when we pray, we call out to Jesus to save us from our sin. Um, when we call out to, to, to Jesus to save us from our sin, we don't believe in prayer. Um, you know, we do believe in prayer in the sense that prayer works, uh, but we don't believe in prayer. Our faith isn't in prayer, but in the one who answers prayer. We believe in the God who saves. Uh, we cry out to the God who will rescue us. We believe that when Jesus died on the cross, he was being punished for our sin. We trust the words of the Bible. We trust what God has said about himself. We believe that he was paying the sin debt that we owed. We believe that he is the one who is going to declare us justified, that is righteous in God's sight. Uh, we, be, we believe that he has secured for us a future and an eternity. And so we trust in the living God. We trust in the God who answers our prayers. We believe that we are saved by Christ. That's what faith is. Well, do you believe that God will save us from the trials and troubles of life that we experience today? Do you believe that God will save us from this pandemic. If you're a Christian and you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you should be trusting him for the solutions in these days. My faith is in God to save. What of yours? Now we don't know the means that he will use. Uh, we do not know whether we in fact will be spared. There are no guarantees in the Bible to say that he will spare us. We don't know what will happen beyond today. But we do know that we can trust God with everything. Will we? 2021, as it were, has just begun. Will we trust Jesus this year? The verses go on and were read to us. But the one that I want to just highlight to you before I close is Isaiah 33 and verse 6. He, that's Jesus or God, he will be the sure foundation for your times. A rich store of salvation and wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the key to this treasure. Do you trust God? Is he the one that you uh, acknowledge as king? Uh, do you acknowledge and have you bowed the knee before him? And if you have... Do you believe that he will keep you? 
He'll certainly keep you for all eternity, but can you trust him with 2021? I think you can. I hope that you will. Let's pray. Glorious, loving Father, we want to thank you that we can come to you uh, and to seek your face and we can know that you're a God who hears and answers prayer and we thank you and, and praise you that we can trust you for this year. Lord, we see the pandemic around us, we recognise that we need rescuing from this and so we ask Lord that you would rescue us. Lord, if it is that these vaccines are the cure, then Lord, we pray that they would get spread to everyone that they need to be spread to in a very quick time, we pray. Lord, that your hand would be upon us here in this land, but not just here, Lord, this pandemic is affecting many around the world. And so we pray that in your sovereign grace, that your people would reach out to you in these days and ask to be rescued. And Lord, that you would come and save. Uh, Father, we thank you that we can trust you. We thank you that the Lord Jesus is the one who works powerfully in our world today. Holy Spirit, help us to see these things. And we ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. So it's good to have somewhere to run to when you are feeling scared. And our next song really just underlines that very fact as we sing Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy river side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Cleanse me from its guilt and power. Not the labor of my hands can fulfill the law's demands could my zeal no respite no could my tears forever flow or for sin could not atone thou must save and thou alone Nothing in my hand I bring Simply to the cross I cling Naked come to Thee for dress Help us look to Thee for grace Foul I to the fountain fly Wash me, Savior, or I die I draw this fleeting breath When my eyes are close to death When I soar through tracks unknown See me in thy judgment throne Rock of ages, death for me Let me hide myself in thee So thank you for coming along and uh, enjoying our service at uh, New Milton Evangelical Free Church. It's lovely to have seen you and we trust that you'll know the Lord's blessing as you continue through the week. If you want to know any more uh, about us, then do please check out the web page um, www.nmefc.com or, or uh, find the uh, link in the ribbon on the YouTube, play, uh, YouTube page above. YouTube, I can't even say the word, YouTube page above. Uh, anyway, lovely to see you. God bless.